we are we're really excited about this. We've got so much to cover, and we want to make sure we get this in in a reasonable period of time for you. So, uh, welcome, Tim. It's great to have you here. Uh, it's great to see you. First of all, welcome. It's I was thinking this morning. I'm just so thrilled that we're doing this together, and it's great to see you, bro. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. And Dan, it's a, it's, it's wonderful to have you on this call as well. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and and really happy to be here with Tim. So, yeah. So so here's what we're gonna do, folks. We uh we've got a lot to cover. I want to cover some of the stuff on the purchase side too. We've got a lot of strategies. Tim is a brilliant coach. We've got a lot of data for you. We're gonna be talking to you about a lot of the experiences. You know, between Tim and myself, we've done about four billion dollars in production. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about things that have worked for us as well because we've been through these cycles how we've captured refis. The way to do it is in advance of the rate drop. There's a trick to it. We're going to share all that with you. But the first thing we want to do is we want to give you the script. And by the way, Tim is going to share with us, if I'm not mistaken, Tim, you're going to share with us some real detailed scripts with everybody. Yeah, I put together a free download for everyone of uh, five different scripts. You'll probably hear me recite some of them, just depending upon where this call goes. And when we put them together in both audio and written format, so you can study them and practice them. Which is great. And Tim's just giving that to all of you. So you're going to get that. But we want to start first with the economic data, because look, you're going to be talking to people. We want you to speak in an educated manner. Now, I want you to be really focused on this call. Just please take your phone and please, if you can, put it aside. Take the email, just put it aside. Make believe you're talking with a customer and you're doing their mortgage application. You're not going to be answering emails and phone calls. So let's just stay focused. This is for you. This is a great opportunity for you. So that's the first thing. I want you to take some notes. So however you like to do it, if you like to do it on your computer, if you want to just do it pen and, and, and paper, get ready because I want you to take notes. Not only are you going to have things that you're going to want to say, but there's data that we're going to talk about. The way we're going to do this is Dan and I are going to run through very quickly. So you're going to have to put your mental roller skates on. Okay, we're going to do this fast. So you're going to, we're going to give you lots of data. We want you to take the salient points for that data that resonate with you because this is your rationale when you talk to your customers of the upcoming opportunity, where things are going to go. So we want to give it to you so you understand it, but not just to consume. We want to give it to you so you can then teach it to your referral sources, to your customers, and really take advantage of this refinance opportunity. Okay. Uh, anything, Tim or Dan, before we, before we roll with this? <clears throat> Fire away, bro. Okay. Here we go. All right. So it's going to be a little bit of a fire hose here. So hold on, get ready. Here we go. First thing I want to tell you is congratulations for being a survivor. 2023, we've got the best date on this as defined by those who closed alone in 2023, not licenses that actually did business, 233,000. In the last 90 days, who has closed alone? 153,000. So essentially, we've seen 34% of the population drop off. This is, this is big. So you have survived. But there's good times ahead. We feel bad that these people weren't around. They may jump back in because there are good times coming. Now, in the, if you wanted to see where you stack up, and people always like this, of the 153,000 remaining originators, what's the median? In other words, 75,000 originators did more, 75,000 originators did less than this number in the last 12 months, and that is 4.2 million. And if you were to go, it's a different count here. It's a different way. It doesn't mean 4.2 equal 14 loans, but if you wanted to do it by unit count, it's 14. Now, if you want to be in the top 25%, you did 10 million in the last 12 months. Tim, you and I probably remember even back when you and I in robust days of originating a long time ago, you had to do like at least a million dollars a month to be considered you know, reasonable, right? Today, yeah. it's about $800,000 a month or so. Uh, to be in the top 25% gives you the state of affairs here. Top 10% is 20 million in the last 12 months. Top 5% roughly 30 million. Top 1% 60 million. You did that. Congratulations. You are in some rarefied air if you did above 20 million in the last 12 months. Okay, but we want everybody to get there. So let's talk about the opportunity. Monthly real estate transactions is 376,000. We expect that to rise 270 thousand of these need you because that's who needs a mortgage. So you have 270,000 purchase shots a month, but you also have 256,000 refinance shots a month. There's 526,000 opportunities you have every month. We want you to get as much of that as you can. And that's what we're going to talk about there today. Dan, real quick, why don't you talk to this slide very quickly on inflation? 
Well, inflation was much higher previously. It was on the CPI above 9%. And you can see looking at the black line, it's come down quite a bit, but we haven't broken down into some shaded areas. The orange line is shelter, which makes up almost 46% of the core index. And the blue line is your motor vehicle insurance. You know, those two items are pretty much where all the inflation is coming from. So the Fed's done a good job of getting most of the inflation down. In fact, when you remove those two items, it's only up 0.19% year over year. So all the inflation is coming from those areas. And if you look on a month over month basis, just this morning, we got the consumer price index for the month of July. If you remove shelter and motor vehicle insurance, all the other items actually declined by one tenth of a percent. Yeah, and if you watch this morning's update, the song was, it takes two, it takes these two. Now we do believe that rates will come down more due to the fact that shelter costs representing the vast majority. In fact, if you took a look at the year-over-year -year CPI, 2.33 of the 3.21 is just shelter. Now, motor vehicle has been calmer, has been tamer. It's been coming down, still a little bit hot, but the shelter costs will come down. Every other metrics out there is showing that the Fed, by, by looking at the BLS's number of 5.1%, or even the BEA's number, which is in, in, in the PCE, which will get August 30th, those numbers are above 5% year over year. But Dan, pretty much every other metric is between 3 and 4% year over year on shelter. That is correct. When you're looking at CoreLogic and their blended rents, you know, new rents are negative on a year over year basis. But what I'm really excited about seeing is the PCE report at the end of this month, August 30th. That's the Fed's favorite measure. That's what they're benchmarking the 2% against the core reading there. And if you look at yesterday's producer price index report, that was favorable and tame numbers. A lot of the components shared with the PCE report will get on August 30th. And then today's consumer price index report, all the other items, as we mentioned, were actually slightly negative when you put them all together. And the one thing holding this report up is shelter because it makes up almost 46% of the core. But within the PCE report, it only makes up about 17.5%. So we think that number is going to be favorable at the end of the month. In fact, we think it's going to be so favorable that we expect it to be perhaps one tenth of a percent or or maybe less than that as the core month over month reading. Now, that's going to come out August 30th. We think that could be a good day for the bond market. So maybe just keep that in mind that August 30th could should be a good day for the bond market. Look, no guarantees in life, but the way we're calculating it, it looks good. Now, we know that the Fed has focused and you guys have known this for a long time because we've We've been on the forefront of this. It's so rewarding for us to see you know, all these things that we've talked to you about and all these things that you're talking to your customers about way ahead of everybody else. Now people are discovering that it is the employment part of it that's going to cause the Fed to have to respond. We had an employment report that was lousy, that was for July. We got that for the um, um, last, I believe that was August 5th that we got that report on. Um, and since then, of course, rates have responded very favorably. And here's why we've shown this to you that of the 19 Fed members, two Fed members thought it was going to be 3.8 to 3.9 percent. Again, we don't know what these people were thinking. 14 Fed members think four to 4.1, but at 4.3, you know, at least 16 Fed members are now surprised. And Jerome Powell said it's going to take a surprise for the cuts. So the question is will it be 50 basis points on September 18th? Will it be 25? The determining factor will be the jobs number that we get for August. We're going to get that in early September. That is going to be a key function in determining whether it be 50 or, or, or a 25 basis point cut. Uh, let's hope that it was not an anomaly to see this. And we know that the BLS is not necessarily very reliable, but these numbers did show a big jump from 4.1 to 4.3. The 7.8% in the U6, that's the all-in unemployment rate. Dan, just talk to that very, very quickly. That was an enormous jump. Yes, highest level since October of 2021. That is probably really the real unemployment rate in the U.S. because it adds back all the things that the U3, which is the one everybody quotes, removes. For instance, if you haven't looked for a job for more than four weeks, hey, you're no longer in the unemployed or labor force. And this no sum yet means uh, this Claudia sum, uh, this, 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 this sum rule. It's really not a rule. It's more of a condition that tells us that you're in a recession uh, based upon this 4.3%, because it's the change. It's the change from that low of 3.4 to 4.3 in uh, and, and the last three months where the average has been. It's a little bit of a complicated mathematical formula. But Claudia Sam is saying that, well, maybe because of the influx of immigration, maybe it's not triggered yet. 
but goodness gracious, we are sure close to recession-like conditions, whether we are actually theoretically in or not in recession, the Fed is going to have to respond because it will be recession-like conditions. And we know that BLS has been very unreliable. In the fourth quarter, the BLS told us we had 637,000 jobs creations. Now, I don't have to tell you what the fourth quarter of 2023 was like. It was brutal. We were getting rates at 8% on mortgages. But a lot of that was because the job numbers looked so strong. Now, the BLS was overstating this. Now, it's a Herculean effort to do it. So I'm not going to say that you know they're not trying to do a good job. They are. But when the numbers were actually reconciled, and unfortunately, it's such a long time it takes to reconcile the numbers because it's such a large labor force, you know, 170 million people. It's very big. It's very hard to do. But when they do reconcile it, we found the real numbers for October were not 165,000, but it was a loss. November, very modest gain. December, you know, less than half the gain. So you know, 521,000 of the 637,000 jobs they told us were not created. We only had for the quarter a very low amount. The average, the average amount was an overstatement of 173,000. So, uh, look, team, what we're saying here is that eventually these numbers are going to wash out, and you're going to see an improvement. Okay, so here's the big takeaway: Where could mortgage rates go? So. We believe that the Fed is behind the curve. And there's some complicated formulas for this, but we're going to try and go fast here with you. Let's call the Fed funds rate 5.4% right now, just as rounding. It's five and three. It's so it's 5.4%. When we look at what the rate of inflation is trending towards or is, and then you take something called the R star, it's a natural rate of inflation over and above that. We think the Fed needs to drop by 200 basis points. We've been saying that. And in fact, Dan, if I'm not mistaken, this morning, the Fed Funds Futures contract is pricing in exactly that over the next 12 months. Is that correct? That is 100% right. Dan, let's please bring up for everybody the 10-year treasury because I want to show them. You can go right to our site. I want to show you why we think the three and a quarter on the 10-year treasury is very realistic. So we know that today, as we speak right now, we're a bit above 380, and there's a little bit of, of, of resistance or support, I should say, we got to try and get through. So, so Dan, why don't you walk us through the case for three and a quarter? You might have to go a little bit longer time frame, and maybe just to clean it up, uh, Dan, take away some of the moving averages and things like that that we can then uh, just just unclick. Uh, yeah, the support resistance, moving average, all good stuff to just remove there, and just unclick the moving averages to your top left there. Okay, so uh, Dan, just show us where that three and a quarter level is there. Yeah, and so three and a quarter, you can see we hit back here around April of 2023. So you know, right now we're at a level of around 380. Really important that we held that 4%. We're moving lower. We actually have a clear path down towards 366 or so in the in, in the near term. Show us that right there. This is the low from right here. We just saw back uh, in the beginning of August. August after 5th. The, after, after the, the job report. report. Yeah. So. We think we can definitely get there, but there's a case to be made that we can get yields down to some of these April 2023 lows. And you know, Barry, I know you're going to talk about the spread between mortgage rates and the 10 year, but we think that we can certainly get back to these levels with inflation coming down, the jobs being weak, the Fed starting to cut rates in September and signaling that inflation's under control in the economy, which is clearly slowing down. And you know, based on spreads, which you'll go over, uh, you know, if you see a, th a three and a quarter. 10 year boy if spreads come to more normal areas that could be around five and a half 30 year fix let, well let's not give that away yet dan let's let's talk about the spreads okay so um wh where where are we here so the spread reduction punchline uh, yeah exactly uh the the spread in we think the spread could be reduced to two and a quarter and two and a half so so for everybody's benefit here okay what what what, what is what do we mean by the spread mm -hmm. so if you took the 10-year treasury and you took 30-year fixed rate mortgages. The difference between what a 10-year treasury yield is and a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is that's called the spread for us, okay? That's the spread in between the two. So historically, for a very long time, I'm gonna show you, it has been between 1.6 and 2%, not always, but for the majority of time, and let me bring it up so you can see it, is you could see, let's go back, a really wide sample here, 30 years or so. So if you took 1.6 and 2%, we're within this range over 80% of the time. Now, sometimes we do get above it, but we tend to come back within the range. And the times that we do get above it, you do see things like a great recession. You do see the great financial crisis. You do see COVID. So there are events that cause us to go much above the spread. 
But look at how tame it had been between this area. Again, not always there. So nothing is a 100% rule, but this is an area that we can say, okay, this is a normal spread. But we're not even going to say a normal spread because on the last slide, what I did show you is let's just say the spread gets reduced to forget 1.6 to 2 in the range of two and a quarter to two and a half. Well, where are we today? Boy, when we saw the yields get, the spreads get much higher, they reached over 3%. It was like 3.1% here. That was in the fall of last year. We had those fictitiously strong job numbers that came out. And it was panic time for the markets, thinking that the economy was super overheating, even though it was not. Now, when we see where we are today, we're approximately, and Dan could probably give me an exact number, but in that range of 2.6 to 2.7%, Dan, right? Where are we there? 2.58. Yep. 2.58. So let's call it, thank you, Diana. Let's call it 2. Point, we're going to round it to make it a little easy for you. So 2.6%. So let's now do some math. So we know that if the 10-year treasury gets to three and a quarter, and let's say that the spread gets to two and a half, well, Dan, go ahead. Now you could really be able to punch yeah. line. Where would that put us? Oh, you'd be at like five and three quarters on a 30-year fix. But what if we got to two and a quarter, which would be kind of up in here, okay? So up in this range, where would that put 30-year fixed rates? Right at five and a half. So actually five and a quarter percent, it would put, uh, five and a half percent, pardon me. Yeah, five and a half percent. If we were to get there, um, team, what would that do for your business if rates were five and a half? To five and three quarters. Well, we're going to show you what it would do based on the opportunity. But first, let, let me just explain why we think the spreads will be reduced. Okay. Important that you understand this. Part of the value of a mortgage is servicing rights. You guys know this, right? You've heard of it. It goes into the value. Now, you know the difference between yield and price. When price goes up, yield goes down. So the more you add to price, the better the price, the lower the yield. So servicing values, the more the servicing value, the lower the yield. The less the servicing value, the higher the yield. Servicing values will change based upon the rate. Interest rates, when they were above 7 or 8%, very little servicing value. Why? Why, Dan, would you have very little servicing value? Well, because there's a big uh, propensity for people to refinance once rates come down. So uh, there is a prepayment risk there. So um, when rates are high like that, you don't have that value of that priced into the mortgage there, which is why this part of the reason why the spray gets so big. Exactly. And the reason why the, the, it's important is because no one holds a mortgage. This is all explained in CMA, guys, by the way, but no one holds a mortgage. The servicer wants that mortgage to be on their books because every month they get paid a fee. So the longer the expectation that they'll hold the mortgage, the greater the servicing. Mortgages at 3% have lots of servicing value because the chances of refinancing that are low. Mortgages at 7.5% or 8%, Chances of refinancing are high, so lower servicing value. So the more rates come down, the more servicing value gets added because there's a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less risk of refinancing. So that servicing value gets added and that reduces the spread. So as the 10-year comes down, mortgage rates come down, servicing values increase, makes mortgage rates come down just a little bit more. And that's why you have this, okay? Hopefully this explanation is helpful for all of you. I know we're taking you to high places that nobody else does, but it's important that you know this so you're smarter than everybody else. Now, how much opportunity do you have? Okay, rates at six and a half. And Dan, what was the refinance numbers that we got today from the MBA? Boy, last week, mortgage applications for refis rose 35%. That follows a 16% rise in the previous week. Uh, combined, it's about 57% or so of an increase in just the last two weeks. And this shows you now, guys, we showed this chart two months ago in the daily update, shows you how far ahead, and we were dead on. We're showing you sensitivity. That's the key. The whole purpose is showing you how to make more money. Things are sensitive now. So there are 2 million loans that were originated only between 22 and 2024. Why do we count everything before that out? Because look, if you didn't refinance before, there was a reason. So if you did your loan between 2022 and 2024, we think you're eligible. And we think there's 2 million loans that at, if rates stabilize at six and a half, 2 million loans for you guys to do. Another 2 million if rates go to six, 
and 2 million more making 6 million loans. If rates go right into the target that Dan was talking about at 5.5%, which we think is realistic, and Dan, once again, that's a three and a quarter, 10 year mm -hmm. with servicing value spreads getting reduced from 2.58 to 2.25. None of this is pie in the sky, team. All very realistic. But you need to know the future before it becomes obvious. So we're going to talk about with Tim is what to do today so you can take advantage of it. And by the way, our qualifications for this were half a percent reduction in rate, 2000 bucks in hard closing costs. If you took a $500,000 loan, you'd recover in 12 months, a $300,000 loan in about 18 months. All people that would say, hey, refi me, do me, right? So that's what, oh, by the way, and other opportunities, which is the benefit of MI removal, we're not even contemplating that, and debt consolidation. So there may be more opportunities than what we're explaining to you. Okay, now's the time for you to get heavily invested in this team. There, there are 10 million loans done that are ripe for refinance. We showed you the 6 million there that, that are in that position right now. Uh, Tim, jump in with us and let's talk about strike price. Oh, can I say one thing? I apologize, just the order of this. I want to just explain one thing is that arms. Arms will be very valuable for purchases. Arms will be very valuable for refinances because they will make a comeback. The yield spread is uninverted. The reason why that you had no adjustable rate mortgages, virtually less than 5%, is because when the yield curve is inverted, meaning shorter term rates are more expensive than longer term rates, you know that means a 30-year fix theoretically would be very close to or the same or maybe even cheaper than a five or seven year arm or maybe not, even meaning, not a meaningful way uh, beneficial. But as the yield curve gets normal, and shorter term rates become less than longer term rates, then that distance in between is where you could plug in a five year, a seven year, and they would have a benefit. Now, remember, Dan, people say five year, but you really shouldn't lead with saying it's a five year because it's mathematically beneficial for? Uh, probably closer to seven to eight years at least. And on a seven year, you know, you're in the nine or 10 years likely. So remember, on a mathematical perspective, you say five year, but you should lead with almost like, hey, a loan that mathematically has to be minimal, cheaper for seven years or so is a five year adjustable. So you know, people hear five year, they think five year, but they should be thinking longer term. What's the last time you had a mortgage for seven years in, in duration that you lived in the home and had the same mortgage for seven years? Now, Tim, let's talk about something that you know, both you and I would prep our customers with, but you do it so eloquently. So please come on back in here. And thanks for listening to the case for why lower rates are going to happen. There's so much to say. And good thing I talk fast. Hopefully I can cover a lot of it. I'm going to, I'm going to start with where you were just at. So we could just kind of play right into that. So arms, they're not arms. Okay. Let's first start with that. Don't call them an adjustable rate mortgage. That's a scary word. Okay. I have a loan that is fixed for 60 months, not five years, 60 months, sounds better, sounds longer, or 84 months. Here's a question that I wanna ask you. And I used to ask clients this all the time. Tell me what's different in your life now than 84 months ago. Okay, and they start reciting because, well, I didn't have kids, I wasn't married, I lived in, you know, I, I had a totally different job, et cetera. 84 months is a long time. And to your point, it's not 84 months, it's more like nine years, okay? My job, the, the only important question that we ever need to answer Jim or, or Mary Jones as the consumer is, how long do I need to borrow this money for? Not how long I'm going to be in the home for. That only answers a portion of the question. How long do we need to borrow this money for? I want to show you and talk to you about the cyclical nature of interest rates and how there is always an opportunity to swap out this debt in the future for cheaper debt because it's just a big cycle. 84 months is a very long time. A lot's transpired in your life in the last 84 months. A lot more is going to transpire in your life in the next 84 months. And if I'm doing my job correctly, my job really just begins when your first loan closes with me because it's my job to manage that debt proactively and make you aware of opportunities to swap that debt out for cheaper debt. I, I Barry, I would tell you, Dan, I would tell you, I, I sold way more hybrid fixed rate loans, which is what I call them, than I did 30-year and 15-year fixed rate mortgages as an originator. And it's a good thing I did because it served my clients tremendously. Now, you must fulfill your end of the obligation, which is to be a debt manager, which is to proactively stay in touch with your past clients and consistently be touching base with them as to what's transpiring in their life that may cause life changes and subsequent need for different debt. Strike rate. Let's talk about that for a second. 
If you've been doing your job correctly for the last 12 months or so, 18 months, you've been establishing a strike rate with your clients. If you have not done so, you need to start today. What is a strike rate? A strike rate is the interest rate that it would take for it to be irrefutable that it would make sense to do a new loan vis-a-vis -vis debt consolidation, vis-a-vis -vis cash out to add on your home, vis-a-vis -vis a reduction in the existing monthly payment that is currently in place right now. You need to be establishing that right now. This last window team was a major head fake to your benefit. It gave you a little snapshot for about a 10 day period of time of what's coming. And then it retreated a little bit, right? So you got an opportunity to see what was going to happen. What happened? I have clients who have told me, Barry and Dan, believe it or not, that they have had their clients solicited by in excess of 100 lenders in the last two weeks. I mean, they're getting carpet bombed. The servicers are contacting them. The consumer direct comp companies like better.com and all of those companies are contacting them. I actually think that's great news, by the way, because I don't know what the hell I would do with a hundred solicitations. It would overwhelm me. I wouldn't even know who to begin to talk to. And I guarantee you the person that I would talk to is the person that I have a relationship with. But the question is, do you have a true relationship with those people that you've done loans with before? And have you been maintaining it? Because we love to talk about the word loyalty and how there's a lack of it, but loyalty is earned. And the way that you earn loyalty is you show people that you care about them. Right now is the time for you to be dialing for dollars. It may not be the time for them to refi right now. But if rates come down to five and a half, there are a whole bunch of people in your past client database that are going to be eligible to be refied for a variety of different reasons. You need to know what questions to ask. So here's an example. If Barry's my client, one of the questions that I'm going to ask him is going to say, Barry, let's first just talk about what's changed in your life since the last time we spoke. You know, do you have any new job opportunities coming up? Are you planning on adding to your family? Are you going to be an empty nester? Let's talk about the duration that we think you're going to be in this loan for so I can factor that into the strike rate that I establish. If you can get into a, a five or a seven year and the high fours or low fives, phew, there's going to be a whole bunch of people in your database that a seven year is actually the perfect program for them to refi them into. Now, I want to share with you real quick, and then I'll take a breath and let you two guys jump in because I'm sure you have a lot of wisdom to share. Uh, a client of mine, Jay Daisy, who's a brilliant loan originator, he does 25, 30 deals a month uh, out of Minnesota. He did a presentation at one of my recent Leadership 360 retreats on something that I had never thought of before. I kind of intuitively did this abstractly, but I liked his system. You need to be sorting your database right now. You need to know exactly who are the people that are a strike rate of six and a quarter, exactly who is a strike rate of six and an eighth, six, five and seven eighths, et cetera. You need to know exactly who you need to pounce on the minute that that window of opportunity becomes available. But not every borrower in your database is created equal. So he has categorized it into a four section quadrant. He calls it easy, 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 hard, hard, easy, hard, hard. Okay. What does that mean? Easy, easy are his borrowers that are easy to work with and it's an easy loan. They get moved to the top of the list. Easy hard are the borrowers that are easy to work with, but their loan was a bit more challenging. Okay. That's your second tier. Hard easy are difficult borrowers who are going to give your team a lot of grief and maybe they have an easy loan, but they weren't very fun to work with. That's your third tier. And hard, hard is a tough loan, tough borrower, not a lot of fun. What happens is, is that when these windows open, you guys, people scramble. They don't even know who to call. And mean, in the meantime, their servicers are hitting them. They're getting solicited by consumer direct companies, like I mentioned before, and they miss these windows of opportunity. So right now is the time for you to be going into your database, really looking at who the clients are, categorizing them in these four different categories, establishing a strike rate. I don't know why that thumbs up came in there. I'm not giving that to myself, but that just happens mysteriously sometimes on Zoom and categorizing them accordingly and establishing a strike rate with them. So when it is time to contact them, you, there's no selling. The selling takes place now. Right now is when you're closing the deal. If, if I'm talking to Dan and I'm establishing with him, his strike rate is five and seven eighths, and we're currently at six and a half. The way that call is going to conclude is I'm going to say, now, Dan, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch this for you religiously every single day. 
The minute that that rate becomes available because these windows of opportunity pop open for just short periods of time, we saw that in early August where they dropped down, but then they spiked back up. I'd like to have your permission to lock you in and get you reapproved the minute that five and seven eights becomes available. There'll be a short list of documentation that we need to get from you. My team will send that over. You'll upload it to our portal and then you will be good to go. Now's the time to close that deal. When the rate drops, I'm not going to call Dan and say, Hey, Dan, I want to talk to you. And then he calls me back. We play phone tag. I got to put together a spreadsheet for him. He wants to check with the CPA before you know what the window of opportunity is closed or some other solicitor has come in and now I've got a competitor. No, now is the time to solidify the deal. So it's a phone call that is a voicemail to Dan or a text, Dan, great news. You remember the conversation we had seven weeks ago? I can't believe it happened this fast. I got that rate for you. I locked you in. You're saving $271 a month, $3,600 a year. Over the course of the next five years, we're going to save you $18,000. You got to sell the big numbers. You got to make it sound meaty and, and, and substantial to them. And I just got a couple of things I need from you. Next payment, Dan, is going to be your last payment at the higher rate and higher payment. I'm so thrilled to say that on October the 1st, you're going to be saving that $271 a month. We'll keep doing this again every six months if they keep dropping. Now, think about this for a minute. If I'm making it that easy on Dan, and it's just a simple call and I tell them what's going to happen and I sell the big numbers. Now, if you get carpet bombed by 50 people and they're all selling you different things, it becomes a big distracting headache. And you're like, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to go work with my friend, Tim, because he's got it all figured out for me already. He's going to make it easy on me. So let me hit pause there. And and, and so listen, Tim, it's, it's freaking brilliant. Love it. Uh, this is, you know, just the way I used to do. Remember, I said I was going to share some tips and secrets. Tim, you articulated beautifully. Clearly, you know, we, we might have done some things differently, but I was in the habit on every single transaction that I did that was a purchase or a refi. I would establish that strike price. OK, so. Here's where it would make sense for us to get the lower. In fact, that was the selling feature of why you would work with me is that we would monitor the loans for you and we would tell you that, hey, th this is not the end of the road. This is the beginning because as your debt manager, you know, that's one of the things that we think is so important as your debt manager, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep monitoring this. So let's figure and let's establish where it's important. Now with early payoffs, you got to contemplate that. So in this, by the way, I love the easy, 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 you know, I, I love that. And you could, you can sort them any way that you like, but I think what Tim has established here is something great. And yeah, I intuitively used to call the ones that I know are home runs or slam dunks or even larger loan sizes first because it's limited. But I want you to make sure you caught what Tim said, that this helped you to see rates drop and go back because it showed you A, a clear test, the litmus test, sensitivity, what Dan told you on the numbers. It is going to be an extraordinarily hot refinance market. So we know how sensitive it is. Purchases are a little different because the purchase money needs to stay at lower rates first because, okay, it's lower. Now I'm going to be aware. Now I'm going to shop. Now I'm going to look. Now, so you need them to linger there for a period of time. Refis, boom. What we need to do, though, is protect your customers because they're, as Tim told you, going to be under attack. Don't let somebody steal food off your table. These are customers that you've worked for. So get in the habit of every time you close a loan, establishing a strike price. It's what I did my entire career. It made so much money. And this is what I'm gonna, where I'm gonna call you. And you keep that in your database. In addition to that, contemplate the early payoff. Contemplate, I love what Tim's doing here. Categorize this for your database, but sell them now. So, you know, Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So today, start calling people, look at your database. Look at all the loans you've done in the past couple of years. And those are the first ones that you go to and start establishing these strike prices so that you know when you're going to call them, you know when you're going to do it. And don't worry about the other thing is the fear of missing out because people get greedy. Okay, so I've got my strike price. It's it. Oh, maybe it'll go lower. Maybe it'll go low. If it goes lower, we'll fix it. Don't worry. Don't miss this chance. Did you see how Tim sold the high numbers? You see what Tim said? It's $18,000 in the next four or five years. $18,000. Wow, that probably represents a reasonable amount of their income that reasonably uh, articulates a big purchase or a big debt that could be paid off or handled. This is free money. Do you want to go to the roulette table and put it on black or red? Or do you want to pocket that money and, hey, you'll get another bite of it because Tim's going to watch that for you. You're going to watch that for your customers. And when it comes, if rates are going to come down, 
we got you covered again, okay? Don't miss out. And what I always did was I quantified this. So here's what I did. It's very important for you to do. An extra eighth, if you got an extra eighth, what does it mean? Okay, what does it mean on a refinance? Think about this. How much a month is it? Okay, so let's say it's, I'm going to pick a number, 20 bucks a month. But if I'm going to save you $300 a month, if you're right and rates go down an eighth two months from now, okay, that's $600. So $600, that's two and a half years it would take you to break even. Is it worth the risk? You have to do mathematical equations. Okay. Um, Let me, can I add a couple of quick things? Yes, please. please. Okay. So- the first question that I want everybody to ask themselves is, were you ready two weeks ago? And, and, and that's a question for you to answer for yourself. Were you truly ready? Did you know who to call? Did you know what to say? Did they remember who you were? And was it an easy, quick phone call where you were able, were able to just bring in a bunch of loans? I have a lot of clients who, Ching Ching, had huge days a couple of weeks ago. They were ready. A part of being ready is, do you have the team in place to facilitate all that business? because you're going to need it. So you need to start to think about that right now. And if that means you just hiring a contract processor that you pay $500 a file to give a deal or two a month to right now to have them in the queue to where when it's go time, you can give them 15 deals. Do that. Be ready for that. The reason that you want to go easy, easy first is because this game is about speed. It's about getting loans done as quickly as you possibly can. When those opportunities are there, you could have two years in one if you do this right. But you cannot be putting crap into your pipeline. You can't put deals into your pipeline that are like giving birth for your team, where it's like just an effort because the person doesn't ever call them back and the deal's a tough deal and all that. that that's the stuff that comes second tier. Work smart. So the next thing that I want to, um, to, to point out, and this is really important, is that there was a loss that happened in the last 10 days. And that loss was people who didn't act quickly. So to the extent that you contacted people in that window of opportunity and they didn't get back to you and the rates spiked back up and now the refi opportunity went away, it is incumbent upon you to share that with them. Most loan originators don't do that. They just put their head down and they're frustrated and I lost three deals that I should have gotten locked in, but I didn't get to them quick enough and they didn't call me back quick enough. No, 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 no. You have to contact them and share the bad news in a professional way. Dan, I got some bad news for you. You remember when I left you that message a couple of days ago and I was able to get you six and a quarter on a refi? It's, it's not there anymore, unfortunately. We're back up to six and five eights. These windows of opportunity are precious. And I don't want to run the risk of that happening to you again. Because for me, like the way I think about it, Dan, is that every month that goes by now from today forward is lost money for you. We're losing $271 a month every single month of what we versus what we should have had. So that's why I need your permission to jump on that opportunity. The minute it becomes available in the future, I don't know when it's going to be, but I'm going to watch it religiously for you. Do I have your permission to lock you in and get you reapproved? So you got to sell the loss that they have as much as you sell the, 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 the game. Finally, um, spend a little bit of time just chatting with them. Okay. Don't be so in such a hurry to just talk numbers, like connect with them, ask them how their family is, ask them what's new in their life. Talk to them about their favorite sports team, what vacation they took this weekend, spend the extra 10 minutes at the top. Why? Because that's what builds loyalty. You want to connect with them. You want them to think of you as an ally and a friend. So when that competition comes in and is offering an eighth better in the rate or the servicers trying to swoop them away, they actually kind of feel like they're not being loyal because you were good to them. You checked in with them. You, you made them laugh. You talked to them a little bit. Finally, consumer direct. For those of you that don't have a very big database right now, you may be saying this doesn't apply to me. I've only been in the business three years. Well, I used to do a ton of consumer direct marketing when I first started in the business. Um, and, and a lot of my clients did and, and still do as well. Here are your consumer direct marketing opportunities. Builders, anybody who bought New homes, which is more than 50% of, I think, the sales, Dan and Barry could tell you, but it's a big number. Those loan originators are not bird dogging refis in most cases right now. Those loan originators, they want the builder wants them focused on the new purchase stuff. Those are refis sitting there waiting to happen and nobody's calling them. Secondly, credit unions. Between 
first of all, credit union loan originators are typically employees. They're not incentivized financially to manage their debt for their clients, et cetera. They, they want to retain those loans on the books, right? Not, not have them run off. You had a lot of fives and sevens done, five and seven, one arms done in the five and a half, five and three quarters, six percent range over the course of the last, say, 24 months or so. Those are easy pickings. Go to your title company or any other aggregate resource, run reports. Give me all loans closed in this window of time from these credit unions in my community. There's a very good chance those people are on fives and sevens at a rate that you can get them into on a 30 year sometime very soon in the future. And that's a different sell. Okay. You now want to sell. Look, you only have 39 months left at this five and three quarters percent. And what I want to make sure we do is play damage control. If that loan were to adjust today, that adjustable rate mortgage would go to eight and a half percent based upon your margin and the prevailing index. I got to get you out of that right now and into something more stable. I can get you the exact same rate on a refi and you can go to sleep easy for the rest of the time that you're in this home because it's not going to go anywhere. Right now you have a vulnerable loan situation. So these are just different strategies and things that you need to be thinking about, about how to pick up deals. All right. So Tim, what I want to try and do here is that's brilliant, Tim. <laughs> and, and so many people are asking questions and yes, Tim is going to share some scripts with you. Uh, so yes, you're in for a treat. Stick around. We're going to explain to you about that. But I see some people asking about, do you pull credit? And, and Tim, I, I didn't pull credit on when we were establishing a strike price. I did it when we were, we're when it's time to do the loan. So, um, so, and, and the same applies for, I'm seeing buy downs. It's not, this is up to you guys on, on your sales skills here to see what fits for your customer. So a lot of these are going to be specific, depends on the customer, but I want to try and just shift focus a little bit here because there's so much we could talk about and we're going to go fast for you on purchases. So a couple of quick things again, by the way, when you do this, notice we started with the economic data first, because we want to establish the case for what's going on, establish your knowledge base. So start there, gain the respect, gain the command, show that you have the knowledge, make the case for it. Then it's compelling. Now here's why we established the strike price. So do you have that? Okay. Uh, Dan, real quick, I used to use this chart, you know, when we used to do presentations, as you know, uh, during the, you know, 2010, 2012, 2013, to show that the housing market was going to be hot. Go ahead, real quick, Dan. And, and back then, this was extremely accurate. And right now we're seeing those that are 25 to 35 year olds living home with, with their parents, 17%. That is the highest level since 1940. And what it's showing is that there is a ton of pent up demand on the sidelines. There's going to be a lot of household formations, meaning these people moving out to buy a home potentially or rent uh, once we see rates come down a little bit further. So this speaks to future demand of housing and it's optimistic. So again, we start with the economic case for it. And that means that when rates come down, you're going to have a lot of demand. You're going to have higher prices. The smart time to buy is not after prices go up, but before they do. See the future before it becomes obvious. You remember Rise of the Machines with Schwarzenegger? Well, now it's going to be the rise of the listing agent. And the listing agent is going to have a lot more control. So there's a lot of strategies for listing agents. And, I, and Tim has some incredible scripts for both listing and buy side. But I think if you think about it, 20% are listing agents, right? 20%. 80% are buy side because it's easier to get in the business on the buy side. You know, I got a friend, I got a relative from my own home and buy side agents and, and Tim, they've never had to, had to negotiate, right? It's always been the listing agent that's had to negotiate. Well, they push the easy button. The, 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 the script was, you don't have to worry about paying me. The seller pays me. Exactly. Now, they have to have an entire presentation around why it is that they should be justified to receive two, two and a half, three percent 3%. And most of them don't have that. So the thing that we are seeing more and more is that it might lean towards a, like buying a car. What do you have in inventory? So listing agents will have more control. We used to just focus on buy side agents for the most part, but listing agents will be a good, refer a, a stronger referral source. So contact listing agents, offer to go on listing, give third-party endorsements, show strength, you'll pre-qual buyers, overcome the lock-in effect for their potential buyers by using the debt consolidation tools and even show listing agents you can overcome the lock-in effect for the potential home seller so they don't lose that listing. Now, Dan, how do you get in touch with listing agents here? What's a great way to do that? Best way is to utilize list reports and the agent intel feature. Put in the zip codes of the areas that you want to look for agents that you do business in. 
You can see them here. You can sort them by how much business they're doing on the buy and the sell side. I'd be doing this sorted by active listings. And then you can go ahead and really drill down. Uh, you can see their active listings that they have. You can look in different areas. And then if you continue, you can see who they are sending their business to. Uh, I believe on the next slide. Yeah, but right here, I wanted to show oh, go ahead. But right, right here how you can help your realtors not get fired. Uh, if, if your realtor's got a listing that's set, sitting for 156 days, they're about to get fired. That home should have sold. So why not pick these up and offer to send them marketing material? But before you do, learn about the agent, Dan. Go ahead. Yeah, so if you see the agent sending all their business over the last year, somebody with the same last name, maybe their spouse, that's going to be tough to crack. But in this instance, Alex sent business to 13 different loan officers. Maybe you can get a share of that. And then you can very easily see their active listings. And while your competition's out there buying them coffee and bagels and trying to gain the relationship, why don't you provide value right away? Pull up one of their active listings, and then you can send them pieces from both MBS Highway as well as list reports to really help that agent to market and sell the home. And here's what they all look like. Things like the buy versus rent, real estate report card, appreciation data, open house flyers. We even create a script for you. And then you, with a click of a button within seconds, are now finding the agent you want to work with based on their business, making sure you might be able to get a share of that business, sending them pieces that will add value right away for their active listing with a script and really show them why they should be working with you and the value that you can provide. And, you know, Agent Intel, unlike other services out there that provide some data like this, we give you alerts as to the best times to engage with them. We give you the content to engage with. Maybe they have a new listing they posted on social media. And then the beauty about the elite automated platform with, with list reports is you know, who wants to go into a CRM and manually create an open house flyer? This is how you keep them happy without having to do anything. All you do is pair with the agent. Every day they get an email from you with insights. Anytime they have a listing within 10 minutes, they get 25 pieces of co-branded content with you. It's, you know, people tell me all the time, it's like, I got free marketing happening every day for me on social uh, based on these flyers and open house flyers, marketing kits, websites, text codes, you name it. So really, I think it's the best activity and bang for your buck on how you should be prospecting and then gaining new agents right now. Well, that's on the listing side, but on the buy side, uh, Tim, we took some of the things that you and I have been talking about and let's talk about creating a fused presentation by meeting with the buyer's agent now. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, what I, what I would be saying to my agents right now is I would be asking some challenging questions that would make them feel uncomfortable, such as, you know, how do you intend to answer the question of why I should work with you? How do you intend to answer the question? Why should I pay you the two and a half percent? Um, so on and so forth. I have a whole list of questions actually that I could provide you with but just to keep it concise. Here's, here's some of the questions from your, from your, your talk there, if you want to just address some of them. Oh, great. Great. So you can see them here. What questions are you afraid of being asked by a buyer? What is the cost to work with you? If I'm the buyer, uh, the public's perception, not mine, is that you don't do very much. How do you, how are you enlightening them and all that you do? Okay. Create some pain, some discomfort, then come in and be Superman to, to, to save or mighty mouse to save the day. You know, one of the things that I'm acutely aware of is that, it's incumbent upon me to be your partner. There are things that I can say about you that you can't say about yourself. And I need to know what are the things that are uncomfortable for you to say about yourself so I can edify you. And ultimately at the end of the day, we need to be creating a fused presentation. When the, when the, the buyer comes to you, you need to be talking to them about me and sharing my value proposition and then getting them over to me. And then I'm going to be talking about you and sharing your value proposition. And let's work together on creating one presentation that substantiates the value that both of us as a team will be bringing to this buyer that makes it irrefutable that it justifies the price. Now, there's there's something that I, that I think is very important that I want to mention. So a long time ago, I created this thing called the perfect loan process. And when I created it, one of the, the reasons, one of the many reasons I created it is because the toughest question that I ever got asked by a consumer was, why should I work with you? I mean, that just kind of put me on my heels. And then I have to feel like I had to pat myself on the back and talk about myself. And it just felt terribly uncomfortable. So as soon as I created this process, I could say, wow, I said, um, 
you know, I'm really glad that you asked. It's it's really not about me. It's about our system. It's about our team. It's about the flow of how we proactively communicate and create a terrific service platform for you. Let me show you my perfect loan process so you can understand why working with us is going to be very different than working with everyone else. So it went from me having a sheepish response where I was worried about being asked that question to bring it on, I actually have a great answer and feel very proud of my answer. Now, I want you to think about this in the construct of a real estate agent. If right now they're afraid of those questions, it's your job to partner with them to create something that is so impressive in the way of a, a fused, as Barry said, presentation between the value you bring and the value that they bring to where it's actually something that you're really proud of, of displaying. And then when you pop the number of two, two and a half, three percent, it doesn't sound so extreme because there's a whole bunch of things that you're doing to earn that money. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, the realtor has, has to create that. Can I just add to that, Tim, because Scott Einbinder, brilliant. Um, if you, if you're not connected with him, he's, he's brilliant. Um, did a whole survey on this to realtors where he asked the question, okay, now you're a buy side realtor. August 17th is here. Uh, you can't get the buyer to sign for 3%. How many of you would take two and a half? Virtually everyone agreed they would. How many would two? 90% would do it at two. One and a half, one, even a half a percent, you're still getting meaningful numbers. What does this tell you? Their commission's gonna shrink. They're gonna find out that this is a different world right now. People are gonna get smart. It's everywhere. Everybody's talking about now, if you sell your house, you're just gonna list for the 3% or two and a half or 2% and the buy side's gonna have to pick up the rest. Sure, there'll be some seller contributions, but here are the key points that Tim talked about and things that you have to be able to do is you have to help justify whatever that buy side realtor is going to do. And what I'm going to do for you is I will explain that you are the best person to negotiate price and your negotiation in price can more than make up for your fee. You're going to dissect and negotiate that home inspection in a way that might encompass your whole fee by looking at that and getting the seller to contribute things. Uh, you're the quarterback, schools, insurance, mortgage, utilities. Somebody has to do it and somebody's got to get paid for that. It's not just showing homes. Here's one thing you have to be, again, it comes down to math. And Dan, I, I want you to try, just kind of explain this because people, I, we've been teaching this to realtors and realtors are loving this. So teach this to the realtor to show the customer. Essentially, look, in a real estate transaction, it's always been where 6% is paid. It still looks like 6% might be paid, but instead of it being where the seller pays all six, it's seller and buyer. Now, today you're a buyer, but sometime in the future, you will be a seller. So Dan, walk through the math on that. Yeah, so you actually could end up doing a little bit better than even previously, because previously you didn't pay anything as the buyer, but you paid 6% as the seller. So now uh, let's, pay, let's say that you're paying 3% as the buyer, but that means when you go to sell the home in the future, you're going to be only paying 3%. Well, wh that 3% is going to be on an appreciated home value. Meanwhile, the 3% on the buy side is going to be on the lower value. So you actually can end up doing mathematically better off under this new format if you look at it in that way. Yeah. Realtors have been loving this as a way to take a look at it. So uh, look, whether or not we think we're wonderful, and Tim, you know this because of the missed opportunity and how people have been bombarded, uh, the statistics show only 19% repeat without any incentive. If you've been keeping in touch with them with garbage, it's 38%. And if you've been giving them something of value, it's almost 60%. So we want to give them something of value. I call it something Deborah Jones taught me years and years and years ago. <clears throat> you got to buy brain cells. And it's what Tim is talking about here. You want to buy their brain cells. You want to be top of mind with them. So you have to be in front of them. How do you buy their brain cells? Well, well, you want to get in front of them. And, and Dan, would you mind, uh, oh, and we lost Dan there for a minute. Okay, we got to get Dan back. Um, so we've created something called Home Report. And look, many of you use a great tool called HomeBot. HomeBot's fantastic. But Home Report essentially does a lot of those same things in as, as far as buying brain cells. And by buying their brain cells, what I mean is give them something of value every month that puts you front of mind. So this will tell you what is your value of your home. It's going to change month to month, but everybody wants to know how much is my home worth today? What, what are the equity and cash out opportunities? If there's an MI opportunity. So all these will buy brain cells so they will call you. 
In addition to that, how about a purchase opportunity? Let's tease them with purchase opportunities so that you have a lead for your realtor. You have another deal that you could do. And then some savings calculators, things to keep them engaged and a lot more. I know we lost Dan on there, but when he comes back, let's bring him back here. So we have a special offer for you guys today. You know, we know that HomeBot's like 200 bucks a month. We're coming out with this at 169 bucks a month. Uh, but today, if you wanted to do this, it's a $90 discount. So your price on this is $79.95. If you sign up today, here's the QR code if you wanted to do this and, and go on. And Megan, maybe you could put in the chat the link to get this today, 90 bucks. So you can cancel this at any time, team. It's, it's, this is something you need to be doing to stay top of mind in front of people. Another thing you should do, look, I have nothing to do with American Dream other than I do a lot of the features for them. They have me do stuff. But the people I talk to, they are crushing it. And with rates coming down, the purchase opportunities and refinance, you need to be in front of people. You need to be using social media, but you need to be using traditional media too. This gets you on like CNBC and different networks where you would be in front of an audience, take down this QR code, inquire with them if your territory is available. You know, they do charge you something. I don't know what they charge. All I know is the people that are using it, they're crushing it. And that's all I wanted to tell you about this. Uh, Tim, you want to talk to this just for a minute because you're going to offer some scripts. Yes. So um, I put together five scripts in both audio and written format that address the subject matter of what you need to be saying in your database right now, how to present certain loan uh, programs, et cetera. You can download them at this QR code. I highly recommend that you do so. I think that you'll find them to be incredibly valuable to you right now. I also wanted to mention that the Loan Atlas is doing the uh, bundled uh, discounted price with CMA again. We we did that earlier in the summer and we're going to offer it again. Normally the loan atlas is $349 a month or $3,490 if you pay it all up front. Either way, it's a one-year contract, uh, but we are doing it for $249 a month and including your CMA. And if you're already a CMA um, uh, certified mortgage analyst, we are going to pay for your renewal on that as well. Um, just very quickly, seven one hour live coaching calls every single month taught by myself, Josh metal, Ryan Grant, Craig Strent, Tyler Osby. Josh metal is as well versed on the NAR ruling as anybody that I know he's going to be doing a call for MBS highway later on this month. Um, all-star faculty of coaches, an incredible educational program. The, uh, it's virtual coaching team at a fraction of the cost of coaching. Somebody asked in the chat about the perfect loan process. It's in there along with everything else. So you may want to schedule a demo. Uh, we'd be happy to walk you through it so you can evaluate it, but if very least make sure that you're downloading those scripts and take action with them and go out and get, get ready for this refi boom. And Tim, you're giving everybody those scripts for free there. There's links to it in the chat. You could pick them up, hit that link. Somebody did want to see the American dream one. Let me go back so you could grab that quickly. I will show you that very quickly. There's the QR code if you want to grab that. But Tim is giving you all those scripts for free. There's no obligation to anything. Uh, you, could, you could just go ahead and grab those if you like. Um, and you know what, team? We are, we're pretty good on time here. We did, we did a very good job for, uh, on time. And let me bring up Tim's one more time on the QR code. Please grab that. As you could see, oh, geez. I'm, let me bring that up one more time. As you could see by listening to Tim, you know, Tim and I have been dear friends for many decades. I have such incredible respect for the man. He is, he is a genius. He coaches the top people in our industry. So not only is he coaching, but Tim is a great learner. And as you can see, as he's pointed out, he brings from the top people in our industry what they're doing successfully so that he could share those with you. So I, I could not stress enough that if you want to be in the top of your game, um, you need to be connected to Tim. And I think that, uh, that this coaching program is great. In fact, Dan's not here. I wanted Dan to say, you know, Dan believes in it so much. Dan signed up for it, paid the full amount for Tim's coaching program as well, uh, because that's how important it is. Um, hey, Barry, can I just thank you for those kind words? I want to address a question real quick that was in the chat that I think is an important one because I saw it several times. It's about the EPO issue. So like, if you have a client that just closed, say, in June and they're getting solicited, but you've got an EPO on them and you still got four months left on it, you want to take that one or do you want me to take that one? Go ahead. You could take it first. I'll tell you what I would. Well, what I first thing that I would do is this is I would try to, you know, to to get it to that 60 day window as quickly as possible. And then I tell them, hey, don't worry, I'm going to lock you in for 60 days. We just have to wait for two months to close. 
but, but, you know, the closer that you can get to 60 days, then the script becomes easier. If you closed them last month and you've got an EPO, I don't actually have a script on that unless, I mean, the script is actually for you to talk to your employer about whether or not they're willing to waive it. Um, but I don't know if you have something. No, it's, 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 a, that become, if it was last month, it becomes near 90 days out. You, you and I think in the exact same way. So, Hey, look, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta wait 90 days on this one. Okay. Uh, we're going to watch the market for you. And here's where I would almost reverse it and say, I would like to watch the market for you. Uh, look, we closed, you know, this is in the, in the case where it's last month. So remember what Tim talked about, easy, easy. So put in the forefront of your mind, your easy, easies. This does not qualify for an easy, easy now, right? Okay. Because there's, it's got a little bit of hair. But what I would say is I would say, well, here's where we are. Fed's expected to cut in like a month from now. Okay, let's see what the response is from that. So that now gets you a little bit closer. You might be now 30 days away from being within a 60-day window. And if it makes sense and you got to take a 90-day rate lock and wait 90 days to close to make it worth it, you could see what the cost is for that. Okay, so there are things that you can do to say, okay, we're going to close within this time frame to get you closer. Not every script's going to work. Not everything's going to work. Again, get the easy, easy ones. There's enough of those to keep you very fat and happy for this period of time it's coming. Yeah, we don't want to refi you too soon and miss out on on the on the the better rates that are likely to come forward. So I think that's a great, I think that's a great script pro. Okay. Um, is there anything, Megan or Diana, that you are yes. seeing that we should go over? So just a couple things in one, what we're going to do to make everything very easy. There were so many action items and takeaways from this call. So in one email later this afternoon, you'll have all the links, all the QR codes, everything you need there. So just keep an eye out for that, especially a little uh, slide deck, a little presentation that shows what home report is a little bit more detailed. You'll have that there too. And Barry, I'm happy to show what Dan was going to show about what's coming with home report. Those new. Yeah. Why don't you do that meeting. real quick? Or, well, it's here actually, but. So you have a couple modules here that show things like show from the beginning so people could see what it looks like. Sure. From the top, here's what Barry showed you already. The forecasted appreciation, how it's appreciated since you purchased. There's that savings calculator Barry mentioned to reduce the term and payments. And then the newest module is how you can use some of the equity you have available to pay things like student loans or go on a vacation or different renovations, things like that. So that's very exciting. And then the rest of the piece that we did share with you already. All ideas, these are the ideas to purchase and keep going down just a little bit further from that. So you can see ideas to purchase. Are you ready to move? We'll show you some potential listings that might fit what, what you might, what you might like. So there, this will get better and better and better as it goes. Now, those of you that are at HomeBot, clearly it's a third of the price. That's good. Some of you might say, okay, well, HomeBot might do this, or you guys might do that. It doesn't matter. You aren't using this. What's the idea here? Buy their brain cells, okay? If you could get the same effect of buying their brain cells, who cares if we have a better feature, if they have a better feature, whatever it is, you want to buy their brain cells. That's 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 what this is about. This is not about usability. and not, This is about, do we have enough in there to buy their brain cells? Yes, we do. It's going to keep them engaged. And I think this is something, regardless, whether you use HomeBot, whether you use this, whatever you use, use something like this because you need it to make, to make sure that you're in the forefront of that customer. Yes. And there's a few other things I wanted to address. The ability to co-brand with your referral partner, you guys, that is getting released this week. So stay tuned for that. A lot of amazing upgrades. You want to take advantage of this. This special pricing is only going to be offered today. So be sure that you click the link. And again, we will send out the recording along with the links as well. And, and, and by the way, no cost, no cost to co-brand for your co for your uh, for your uh, realtor for your partner there. And in addition to that, um, people asked how many are you allowed to upload? So this is where we have a big advantage of a home bot. You get a thousand clients you can, and that is very inexpensive for the next thousand, like fifty bucks for another exactly. thousand. So yep. it, it's 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 extraordinarily inexpensive compared to the other tools that are out there. We're just putting this out there for you guys at this time because we think you need it. You know, we want to do it really thin. I think it's a great opportunity. And let and me just way, say, after you just add real quick, you know, like everyone, ever, I want everyone to think about this. I mean, their house is the largest, you know, asset that most people have. And you want to know about that asset, right? I mean, you look at your stock portfolio religiously or your crypto religiously for that exact same reason. That's what this is. This is a monthly report as to how that asset is performing which is super important and super valuable to people. And when you talk about buying brain cells, you're going to own brain cells as a result of having this in your arsenal. Thank you. Is there any other questions, Di or Megan, that we should cover for this wonderful group of people? We had well over 2,000 people. I think it was 2,200 or so that we, we saw on there. Um, so we appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. I think there's a great opportunity ahead for all of you. Megan, Diana, any any 
Just something important. Uh, if you're filling out that Google form and you're ready to go with Home Report, just know there's a second page you need to go to to submit the payment info. So I just don't want you to miss that and look for your credentials. Make sure you follow that second step. But any questions, just email me or Megan and we'd be more than happy to help, whatever you need. And once again, uh, Tim, thank you for, first of all, being here and sharing your wisdom, your time, your brilliance. Thank you for giving value for free to everyone on this call. And also thank you for the discounted offer for Loan Atlas, which I consider to be a critically important tool for everyone. If they want to be on top of their game, the wealth that's in there, I've looked into it. It is absolutely incredible, team. It's something that uh, if you like what you heard from Tim here in the bits and pieces he contributed, so if he had 20 minutes worth of coaching here, uh, imagine, imagine, just, just think about how valuable this will be uh, to be able to have access to, to one of the smartest minds in our industry. Thank you. Thank you. And Barry, so many prayers for you in your. Oh your gosh, thank. Hey, time. so quick update while I got you guys, I'm done with chemo. Thank God, I've got a big scan coming up. I appreciate the prayers. Hope we're good, and look forward to getting my life. I maybe growing a little hair. I've got some seedlings going here. You know, I could see it. So maybe <laughs> they'll come back. <laughs> uh, love you guys. You guys have been so good to me. I, 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 so many comments. Diana will tell you because she's seen oh, like tears, look at the tears love of, on the screen. Oh look my God. That. It's been yeah, tears, tears of appreciation too, for, so it's a beautiful for all your friendship. And Tim, you know, you've been somebody who's checked in on me every single day. God bless you. This man is busy as he is checks in on me every single day. Why well, I'm so blessed to have friends like you and so many of you who have done the same. God bless you all. And thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank love you, you guys. Bless love you guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you.